The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazek Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. Today, I'm down in Perth County with Adam Parker, Mazix agronomist. Adam, how's it going? Very well. Yourself, Bern? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Now, we are here on the farm with Cliff Horse, who runs Country Custom Ag. So, Adam, why is Cliff on The Sharp Edge? So, Cliff and his partners have some highly productive ground here in Perth County, and in doing so, they have some opportunities to maximize their yields, but they also need to cover a lot of acres in a short period of time in the spring. So they're forced with getting a lot of corn acres done and being able to optimize yield and productivity in their business as well. So Cliff and his uh, partners have been able to develop a planter that works very well for their system, which brings a lot of capacity to the field, but also mitigates a lot of compaction and allows the crop to grow evenly and productively. So it's been uh, a really good fit for their business. Well, here's Cliff Horst. So Cliff, tell me about your operation. Okay, Country Custom Ag is a company that owns farm equipment that provides a service to myself and my brother Dale and also to other local farmers in the area uh, in Perth County and uh, Oxford. So today we're going to discuss and dive into your corn planter a little bit. Can you tell us about your corn planter and some of the, the details around it? Yes, uh, this is a third season for the corn planter. We purchase it as a good used unit and uh, it's a 24 row Harvest International. We pull it with a Fent 1038. And uh, the reason behind it, we wanted to have something with a lot of carrying capacity as far as nitrogen, seed, and starter. And uh, we're able to actually skip a farm when we're tendering the planter. So we can carry enough to do 100 acres. So Cliff, can you tell us about a, a normal spring day when you get started with that corn planter? Okay, well, first of all, there's never a normal day, but anyhow. <laughs> uh, ideally, and this has been very efficient for us, uh, you know, we can leave the shop loaded with a planter, go to a field or farm, plant 100 acres, have the tender unit move to the next farm, fill there, plant that farm, fill again, and actually move on to your third farm for the day. And... The tender unit then has to go to the fifth farm for the day. So it's been very, very efficient for us from a labor perspective, from a time perspective. It has increased our acres per day substantially. And meanwhile, you've been able to mitigate that with this tire inflation system. That is right. And, you know, Mazex has done our stand audits and we've done yield tests and they've just proven to us that we made the right decision. So can you tell about some of the specifics as far as the capacity of the planter? Yes, so we can carry 1,600 gallons of 28% uh, nitrogen, UEN, 550 gallons of starter on the tractor, and then it's also uh, central commodity tanks on the planter for seed. So when you uh, are talking about all that uh, 24 row planter, you're, you're starting to add up to a lot of weight. Can you talk about some of the, either some of the capacities or the, the, the axle loads and, and then get into the tires and what we're looking at on uh, keeping this thing afloat? Yes, I can. Uh, some pretty scary numbers actually when I think about planter. I almost don't like to hear them. But uh, the planter, when it's fully loaded, we're about 40 ton total weight, tractor and planter. And you're carrying that on three axles? We're carrying that on three axles, yes. Front of the tractor carries the starter, 550 gallons in the front of the tractor. And then uh, the planter has the 1600 gallon UEN tank and the seed tanks. Can you talk about the tires that uh, you have uh, for this beast? Yes, so we have uh, um, VF tires on the front of the tractor. They're a 710 60R38. The rear of the tractor is a single tire. It's a 965R46. And then the uh, planter, this is where it becomes quite unconventional, is we have no, we don't have pinch rolls. We rather pack down a whole area, I guess, and run at much lower PSI. And they are a 622.5 rim uh, radial tire. And you're running an air inflation system on, on all three axles, is that correct? That is correct. 
front of the tractor we run at uh, 13 psi, rear of the tractor at 10 psi, and the planter at 17. So that's in the field, and when you go to do road travel, do you travel with the planter full? Yes, we do. And what would you run it uh, for a PSI on the road? 60 PSI in the planter and uh, 25 to 30 in the rear of the tractor and about 30 in the front. And as far as those parameters, how did you determine them and how do you set those? Basically running as low as the tire manufacturer recommends for those loads. And do you just have set parameters that you can go to manually in your cab or do you have an automatic system? No, we go manually in our cab. So when you look at the planter, is there anything else on the planter that you have to help adjust your weight? Yes, there's also a wing transfer system. It actually transfers weight to the wings when you're planting in the field. What do you see as the main benefits that this whole uh, system with the air inflation and the radial tires, what, is it, what, what benefits does that bring to your operation? Well, I think what it does is uh, it allows us to carry these weights without any pinch row effect. Um, we have done studies with Maze X the last two years and we have found no difference in emergence or yield um, in the last two years. So you're comparing the center frame, center 12 rows versus the wing 12 rows. Uh, you're seeing no yield difference uh, at harvest. We actually compare the center six rows because that's the center six rows are pretty much all tracked. Do you run tracks on your other equipment? Can you talk about the differences or the benefits you see between uh, these large rotation tires with the air system and tracks? Yes, um, tracks are great in the field. We run tracks on our combines, Green Buggy has tracks. But uh, if you want to run loaded on the road, uh, tire inflation system is by far superior. You can push the PSI up on that tire and just run down the road like normal. And can you talk a little bit about the way that the, the lift system on the axle allows you to accommodate wider tires compared to some other brands? Yes, so on this frame, the Harvest International frame, the tires are lift in front of the row units rather than between. And that's what allows you to go with a 24 inch wide tire. So Cliff, you've been doing this for three years now with this planter. What are the, the overall net benefits to your operation and what would you uh, or say is next steps? Well, definitely one of the huge benefits has been efficiencies. And I personally feel we don't have any pinch roll effect because it's not a conventional pinch roll planter in that sense. And the next steps is probably like I mentioned before, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to see an automatic system on the planter that adjusts the pressure as the weight varies on the planter. I think that would be ideal. That would take it to the next, to the next level. So there you have it. Some great insights from Cliff Horst. Adam, um, a lot of growers wrestle with pinch rows. Um, you know, Cliff really has a nice approach here. Yeah, so there's ability to distribute that weight across a wide tire track, both on the planter frame and on the tractor, allow them to distribute that weight across multiple rows rather than trying to consolidate their weight in between the rows. So it's uh, it's really allowed him to optimize his tire pressures and uh, do a really good job on getting that, uh, alleviating that compaction. Yeah, and the other thing here is, is the mass, right? 40 tons. Um, uh, you need a strategy to handle that, you know, movement across the field. Yeah, so that's the constraint that they have. They try to maximize their planter fills and productivity, which comes with, at the end of the day, about 40 tons of, of weight across three axles. So the only way you can do that is to get wider and longer. So they've really been able to maximize their tire pressures, their tire size, the right technology on the tires to make sure that they're not uh, damaging the soil and ultimately grow growing some high, uh, highly yielding corn. Awesome. Hey, another great episode of the Sharp Edge. Thank you for taking the time, sir. We will see you next time. Ah!